Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week's topic is on static UVWs and how you can use that in your modeling. This is actually a topic I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it's actually pretty simple. So this is probably going to be one of my shorter movies. The idea here is to keep your uh, UVW mapping static while being able to, to model around that. Um, and it can be used to help you bring out the detail of your texture maps in the form of the model. So let's have a look at this uh, simple object. It's just a, a pillar type structure with a little bit of a uh, little bit of green stuff here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and it's got these black bands. Now I've put these into the texture map, which I have open here in Photoshop. I put these into the texture map because they're supposed to be like cracks in the in the object. But you see that the object here is just a simple cylinder. So how can we model the cracks in there without disturbing the UVW mapping? Well, what we need to do is first convert this to an editable poly. And then we'll apply an edit poly modifier followed by a UVW map modifier. And in this way, no matter what we do to the bottom of the modifier stack, the edit poly modifier is going to deselect any kind of selection I have. And the UVW mapping modifier is going to reapply the original mapping. I'll show you what I mean. If I were to say uh, extrude one of these faces, it's going to wreck the UVW mapping. But when I show the end result, my mapping is persistent because of the mapping modifier. So let's try modeling in some of these cracks. I'm going to use connect. I need three segments. Slide them up a little bit and spread them out. OK. I'm just going to move them into place. And again, notice that it's not disturbing my UVW mapping. It's staying persistent. And now I can do whatever I want. Say uh, I could extrude them in. Um, negative 2. The base width can be a little bit gentler, just like that. And now I'm just going to select the outsides here. And I'm going to chamfer it after looping. Give it a few segments there for a nice smooth edge. And there you have it. It hasn't disturbed my UVW mapping at all. I might uh, apply a smooth modifier to it just to kind of keep things nice and orderly. So that said, let's try something a little bit more complicated. So in my in my uh, original texture here, I've put in a window. It's just a little little cut out of a window, with a little bit of blending to it. This is kind of like a cooking show, you know. I prepare everything beforehand, and then I put it in the oven, and immediately it's done. I just pull it out, and and I have it ready. So I'm going to save this, and it should appear in my viewport shortly. Come on now, I'm just going to hit refresh here. There it is. So there's the window. Now, what if I wanted to do a little bit of modeling around this window? Well, same thing goes, right? Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. I can just cut directly into my model and know that all of my mapping stays persistent. I can just extrude this inward a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Maybe I'll cut out some of these windows if I feel like it. Okay. And I'm just keeping uh, these two connected here for the sake of uh, tessellation. Studio Max does not like having a uh, floating vertices. So I'm just going to take these two here. I'm not going to do much more than that. Okay. I'll subtract this by 0.5. Is that going to be enough? Maybe a little bit more. Right there. 
And let's do two more down here. And I'm just just cutting them out and with with reckless disregard for my uh, for my mesh topology. But this isn't a this isn't about modeling. This is about persistent UVW mapping. So cut me some slack. Okay, there we go. Okay, and voila. Not the best modeling job, but you see the picture here. Is that now, if I were to render this, you'll see that it's a little bit more in set. It's a little bit more realistic now. Because it's taking some of the lighting into effect, and it looks like it's really cut out of the object. And I'm using the original texture map as a guide. And that's the trick. Go ahead and try this out on your own. See what it can do for you. It's very, very useful in low poly work, where the texture is almost more important than the model. Um, and it lets you do background uh, buildings really quickly. So until next week, happy modeling. Try this out. Stay tuned next Monday for another Monday movie. Take care.